congestion in the city. to the criminal enforcement section of DOJ, which is what we need to do. 
separate from where I work, and that the, the standards for um, asserting a criminal enforcement action are quite different. And where's the context so we can get this ball rolling on that? Right. Um, that's that not something that I am prepared to talk about today or that I that I'm focused on. Okay, so, first, with that being said, um, and I'm going back to the uh, question that I had asked about how can we have our regulatory agencies more independent of the companies and, and, and the work so close hand in hand. Um, because um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, it was just so much for us at this time. Um, oh, yeah. Um, do you guys get to be trading this paper? I'm going to give you a website. And I'm going to ask you to go there www.freep.com www.freep.com and look at Sunday's um, article and then we want to contact so we can get the referral so we can get the criminal responsible uh, responsible actions to happen because um, the stuff that's happening is criminal corruption they corruption yeah and uh, because uh, I just want to read an excerpt if you allow me to from an email that was for you. And this says, um, and this comes from NDQ, it uh, comes from, uh, going to, uh, from one, several people, NDQ, and um, what else, to somebody else, whatever, but I'll figure it out there. And it says, can you kick the tires over at DEQ to see where this stands? In other words, we want to know what's going on, this, that, and the other. No, we need to know what the issue is and have a responsible, I mean, a reasonable response for the company, a reasonable response for the company who's in violation. I mean, does that sound good? Of course not. And so these emails go on. So you get the article. Uh, this is the main article. You'll get the article and it says, Did Michigan Agency lobby to bend rules on pollutants at Dearborn Steel Mill? Then you go read the article, click on the links. They'll take you to the emails that were going between companies and the MDEQ and the government called out using his uh, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Governor Rick Snyder's business promoting agency. Not community promoting, but business promoting AC. Worked for months behind the scenes. So we need some DOJ referrals so we can get some criminal action going on. Because if we're able to forward you this little stuff, guess what? I bet you this loads and loads of emails and text messages going around that would just blow a bombshell in a whole bunch of stuff that the regulatory agencies can take responsibility for and responsibility responsible actions against companies such as Service Star Marathon, US Steel, Detroit Salt Company, Inland Waters, and whoever that surrounds impact So we need some 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 help that way. I think that would be beneficial. Showing the community how we can criminally uh, charge and be holding these companies responsible. So we need those referrals and we need to help the, the civil department to, to, to work with us to do that.
help us are not giving us answers? Well, I guess our hope today is that you see you've got what I can tell you much for our dedicated government employees out here that were working earnestly with the company to try to put in place meaningful, enforceable controls. But it seems like you're, you're having more communication with the company than with the community, because I'm sure they're going to, when they have a question about how to go about, um, you know, certain things, certain permits, and certain laws, they're getting their questions answered. We're not. That's right. I should just make clear that DOJ is in discussions so with the company the because they are an opposing party in a case that could go to litigation. So. That's We're not having discussions go. with them um, behind closed doors to keep the community out, but because those are privileged, um, confidential settlement discussions with an opposing party in a case that could go to litigation. Uh, I just want to make sure that the, the stance of those communications. So if we were to share that information, we could risk personal liability if we can't. But that's something we could FOIA you when can, it's available. You it may can, be heavily redacted. You can submit a FOIA request for documents that aren't privileged. Mm -hmm. Could you all answer this question? Just in the few concerns. Yes, just a little. How many violations uh, will have to be accounted for before you shut a company down? That doesn't happen. Can you answer that? They just get fined. They got a lot of validation. They got a lot of validation. Well, shutting, shutting a company down isn't something that's done based on a number of violations. It would be done based on, uh, well, a number of factors, including whether there's something that the company could do to stop the violations uh, that are occurring. Well, if we felt, I mean, there are, I'm not sure. Um, so EPA's intention is not to cause, uh, to cause compliance to occur by shutting businesses down because, of course, that has some other kinds of repercussions. The hope is, and the effort that we're using in this case, is to get the company to put on the pollution control equipment and the other measures that will result in improved air quality. So there will not need to talk about shutdown. If, this, if these negotiations are successful, it's going to be a federal consent decree.
Yes. Yes, Dennis. Yes, Dennis. Uh, my name is Vincent Martin. Uh, I represent the community of the community for this area, lifelong resident, and uh, lifelong sufferer of conditions in this community. I mean, I think it's very atrocious to sit down and read in our newspaper that a freedom of information that had to be reported for us to find out that the Michigan Economic Growth Corporation is swaying MDQ to hold our community as collateral damage for the gains of these rich multi-billionaire entities. It's time that y'all do something. I mean, they use false information. It says in the documentation that when the information was found, the, the, uh, the permit should have been avoided. Never happened. Now we turn around and we listen to uh, them requesting opportunities to change the rules while we, you know, but yet the community still suffers. You know, one of the things that I like to put in the situation that all these corporations and these entities that make these rules and not do enough for the community bring some, uh, some kind of uh, filtration for these homes. But these people at least should, should have the right to breathe in that, that house. And then 24-7, I mean, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, they're breathing these poisons at the sake of making them millions of dollars and billions of dollars. So when is it time for the little man to get some, some results in this community? We've been fighting this right now for decades. This is not just the debt. This is not just the service of all this. This is going on before we lose back, so on and so forth. So it's time for a new agency to do something for this community and for communities like ours. This is, because what goes on here, it goes on in communities of color all over the country. It's time to do something. There was an incident that happened, and it, it, I can't say that it was with Severstall, but it was with a resident that lived near Marathon. They had clouds coming over a fence into their yard. The hazmat team came, and the hazmat team said, we don't know what it is. They said, can we have oxygen? They said, we don't have that to give you. How prepared can we make our first responders how, how prepared can we make our community that's sitting on the front line? Can you give them a tank of oxygen to keep in their, their house to make sure should they be encountering a situation where they can't breathe, they have some avenue? What do you have? Can we make something? I'm not sure what. I mean, the, it could be within the context of the SEP that you basically provide into the frontline communities the ability for them to have relief when they are seriously impacted and for the serious impact to be analyzed with air quality, with an air monitor, a sensor that's equipped on the hazmat so that the hazmat, when it shows up, knows what's being encountered. Because some of this stuff is extremely exotic especially when you've got multiple industries contributing to this toxic soup. Okay. We're writing all of this down, just so you don't, we're writing all your comments down and to the extent that they don't fall necessarily within the, the rules for SEP, they will be passing along to other people, like in the environmental justice group, for further discussion. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma
I got one, I got one addition, uh, my guys also, as far as monitoring, we have a system in this area where the, the system to monitor is away from the community that are impacted. We got a, a, a monitor over there by Southwestern High School that is vacant. Um, the air line is, is going to be built for the new international bridge, and we have another monitor over there in Dearborn. But the areas down river from, from, uh, from these places have no monitor. We have an area called River Ridge Peak Course, and Southwestern, I call Public it the Triangle of Toxic uh, Waste. And we have no monitor in the area. And this, and this area is like the highest in the state. They should have a monitor there first before anywhere else. Yeah. There is none there. I like to know what, where, why, why there's no monitor there. Monitor Allen Park better than here. They monitor Allen Park, they monitor all these other places. I'm going to say tomorrow, I spoke to them. Yeah. What, what was that, River what, River what was Rouge? In the city of River Rouge, city of E Course, and South of Detroit, they all are in one of those areas called Island Lincoln. of Detroit. We have three drawbridges, and, and, and we are surrounded by industry in this little area. And Again, we have no monitors just in that particular area. We have one in Adam Park, we have one in Melvin, Dearborn, but nothing for the community that's at least the most uh, pollution. You know, and also, we don't even have an evacuation plan. It, it's something we have right now two door bridges out in the main freeway. It's an accident right now, that's so why I got here so late. If something happens, people I, I can't get out. And they talk about environmental protection, the environmental traps out here. Um, so, yeah, my name is Amina Maxi. I'm also a resident in Detroit. I don't live in this area, but like folks have said, you know, air and, and where pollutants travel to, they have no boundaries. I want to just make a specific point because I have done a lot of commenting in public, being on the record with, with the EPA, with MDQ, and, and one thing I want to say is that, specifically to Summerstall, every person who's commented has mentioned how monitoring is one of the up, of the utmost priority as far as what their you know, beliefs that should happen with that, with the set. So just to be clear, this is so it's on record, if monitoring is not one of the priorities or it's not mentioned by Summerstall, that would be definitely a concern and a question because as this lawyer put it so perfectly, if you are in compliance, monitoring will just continue to show and in areas that are selected by the community. Public monitoring. Public monitoring. A public and display. If you're not, and also show if you're not in compliance. And if you choose not to do that after hearing that every person has mentioned that, that will just go and really reiterate how folks already feel. And the second thing I want to add that if you come back and the, what you ask for is street sweeping or to plant trees or to or to retrofit buses. And I, I can't say I, what I have to say is that that is not what folks are asking for. Right. And this just needs to be clear. So you heard folks say monitoring. So I just want to put that, I just want to- Trees would that. help. Because I know that that can happen. So I think everyone knows in this room that's, that's what folks want. If folks agree, monitoring that was mentioned. Baseline. Okay, so baseline health. Thank you. The base, tax exemption. The baseline health is really needed.
where people weren't offered to get bought out from their toxic area, where literally every other home either people are dying from cancer, respiratory illnesses, or whatever else they may be dying. And so when does it get to a point where the companies, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's a health emergency, pure and simple. So at, at how bad does it have to get before that's declared?
end of fight, if you, you file a suit, if you feel the likelihood of you're likely to get what you want more going to court route than you are sitting down and talking with um, the source of admissions. And I think to date, we feel that that's, that's a better bet for us. I don't know if you've been paying attention. You've been doing so well in the courts recently. So it's, um, you don't know. Well, we just had a victory this weekend with the Supreme Court doing the new state's emission. Yes, so, so, yes, so, 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 I mean, I mean, right now, I think you got to keep ringing the bell. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. You got to keep ringing the bell. And I don't have no problem uh, uh, doing whatever is necessary at this particular time because my brother's been in the hospital since Thanksgiving um, with respiratory problems. From you know, I'm not saying that because of the pollution. You know, but this what, what's going on right in our community exacerbates the condition. People who already have normal conditions, I mean, uh, normal illnesses that, that they can live a lifetime are damaged severely in these communities. You know, and, and, and folks at what state? To make some other people billions of dollars, you know, and, they, and then we, we find out that their uh, the admission, they want 725 times more than what their initial permit was requested. Was requested. And, it, it, I mean, and, I'm, and I asked him, what about a PSD review? Because the number that we got was wrong. I got all kinds of questions that, that, that to circumvent the law. I have lost all confidence in NDEQ because they have been compromised by our government's states. They have sent out here and gave them marching orders to work with business to, to dilute our environmental protection. And I, I suggest that the EPA come here and monitor what they need to monitor. Take them the over. State. They can take them over. Can, why can't they? The EPA can they, take yes, over they can. the they, state. They can take over the monitoring of, of the laws here because right now the state of Michigan is, is under siege by a, a, a victorial government, a governor right. named Rick Snyder, who has all he cares about the bottom line. I mean, we just, we just got a free information, information that shows they got all kinds of emails where it shows that they were compromising uh, 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 uh points. I mean, we got the emails right here. What, man, what do it take? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. One, one last comment is the last comment. Okay. Dialysis. Loss of property. And I think all of that we should be made in jobs. Okay, and, and how many jobs are provided for in the community. I really think this needs a cost benefit analysis. Because to me it seems, and I think to everybody here, the benefits to Semersal and the benefits to its employees are not worth the cost in terms of human health and the environment. That's right. Okay, thank you, everybody.